No, nothing. We're good. So who's doing the refighting? Uh, that would be the Nope. That's on the other side. Oh, oh okay. So we'll just them up. Okay, so I'll invite them up, let people know that we're going to respond as a congregation, mm -hmm. put the whole print on the screen. And it'll be on the screen when four o'clock. Okay. Because that's the, cause it's the only way so it would read if people could actually see it. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Yep. Perfect. All right. Are you good? I think so. I'm sure. As good as I'm ever going to be. No. <laughs> Which is not great. Okay. Well, I'm going to start us off then. Well, good morning. That is not, everybody's still talking, which is awesome, but good morning. 
Thank you. Um, I'm starting us off this morning. We're letting uh, Pastor Evan keep as much of his voice as possible. It's more important for him to bring us the message. So I will bring us our welcome and announcements uh, currently right now. We have quite a few wonderful things going on in the church. If you check on your bulletin, you can see many of those items. I uh, want to let you know that if you would like to do uh, the luminaries or the poinsettias, you have one more week until they are due. You want to uh, get those forms into uh, the church office so that way uh, you can get your luminaries for Christmas Eve or your poinsettias. Uh, they're both available. The poinsettia form shows you the cost. The luminaries are by donation, but if you, uh, you know, there's no f set fee, but if you'd like to donate, it's very much appreciated. We have Christmas Eve services. We want to just remind you of those. We have 5, 7, 30, and 11 uh, coming up at the end of the month. Before that, we have our music ministry putting on the Christmas cantata and the concert band. That's going to be December 17th and 18th and starting at 7 p.m. Before that, we have this week, we have pizza and caroling. That's going to be on Tuesday the 13th. Oh, I'm sorry. It's one week away. Sorry about that. Uh, I, I'm early. That's better. Uh, but December 13th at 6 p.m., come with your family for pizza and go caroling with homes and shut-ins. Uh, come back to the church uh, for cocoa and dessert. No cost, but you need to sign up uh, so they have enough pizza. Sign-ups are in the Narthex and outside Norcross Hall. If you have any questions, you can see Carol Camp. Carol, raise your hand so people know who you are. There she is. So if you have any questions, you can see Carol and sign up for that. Pizza and Caroling, they're going to go see some shut-ins. And um, we appreciate it if you come. If you see more announcements in your bulletin, there's lots going on. By the way, we only have 78 trees left in the tree lot. Uh, but if you would like to sign up to sell those trees, the men are out to do a great job. They could always use some help. Uh, they use a little bonfire out there. It's real nice. Uh, so it's a fun thing to do as a family. Uh, you can sign up for that outside of Norcross Hall or in the Narthex as well. All right, let's take this, uh, take this time uh, to quiet our hearts and uh, prepare for worship as we listen to our prelude. <laughs> Please take this time as we open with a word of prayer. Please bow your heads with me. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together today, giving us this place to worship as we prepare um, in our time of Advent here to prepare for the anniversary that we celebrate uh, the birth of your son. 
Uh, Lord, thank you for all the people who are here today, for all those helping with the worship service. Lord, thank you for giving them a heart for service and a heart that leads in their church. Lord, just be with us today as we worship, as we pray, as we listen to your message. We lift all these things up in your very precious name. Amen. All right, you can join us for our first hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus, on page 196 of your red hymnals. That's 196. Uh, It will be on the screen as well. Uh, Please stand as you are able. As Melissa intimated, I'm getting over laryngitis. Um, I, I'm, not, I'm not sick. I'm not contagious. You don't, I mean, if you want to keep away from me, you know, that's your prerogative, I suppose. But um, I'm, I'm totally fine, but just needing to rest my voice as much as I can. Um, but if the sermon is short, I know that that will win me brownie points with some of you. Uh, and so, so maybe it's a good thing. Well, friends, this morning we uh, have the opportunity pr- to present uh, something on behalf of our pet ministry. Um, we have a, just uh, a moment that many have been waiting for to be able to do this uh, for the Brick Township Police Department. So uh, at this time, I'm going to invite Ivy Kern, who's the, sort of the head of our pet ministry here at church, uh, to come forward uh, with some very special guests. Good morning, St. Paul's. Please join me in welcoming the following members of the Brick Township Police Department. Police Chief James Rico. And Patrolman Glenn Piscina and his canine partner, Diesel. In the spring of 2001, I read in the brick patch of canines, Rebel and Echo, thwarting the sale of illegal drugs in our community. God inspired our pet ministry to sponsor a campaign to purchase a bulletproof vest for a canine partner. Protecting the paws, 
that enforced the laws became our goal. With gratitude, we present the Brick Township Police a check for $2,500 for the purchase of a canine bulletproof vest for diesel. May it protect him as he works alongside his handler, partner, patrolman Glenn Piscina. Thank you all for your service. <clears throat> Well, friends, we're just going to uh, give thanks to God and pray a blessing on, um, on our Brick Police Department, on Glenn, on Diesel. Um, so I'm going to invite you just in an act of, of blessing to reach your hand out uh, up this way as we ask God for uh, his protection and blessing. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, we give you thanks for those who uh, selflessly dedicate themselves to serve others. We give you thanks for Jim and for Glenn and for Diesel and for all every day who put their lives on the line so that we may be safe. And God, we pray your continued blessing on our local police department, on Glenn, on Diesel. God, may they be safe and may they bring um, good things into our community. All this we ask in the name of Jesus the Christ and all the people of God together said, Amen. Amen. We've got a, <clears throat> one more special thing to present. I'm going to ask Jason Littell to come up. Um, he has made this incredible plaque um, to present to our local police department. Wow. So since Diesel's getting something, uh, we can't forget his partner. So. <clears throat> awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here today. And isn't Diesel just incredible? What a, what a great little guy. <clears throat> We're glad to be able to partner with you, to, to support you, and thank you uh, for all you do for our community. Thank you very much. So, thank, you. thank you. Appreciate you, Jim. Thank you very much. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh. Before you go, we want to give you the check. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was all about the class. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, guys. God bless you. <clears throat> what a blessing it is to be able to help serve those in our community. So thank you all for your generosity in helping raise those funds uh, for Diesel. Well, friends, every week during the season of Advent, as we light the Advent wreath, we, we have a reading that reminds us of the story that leads us up to Christmas. So this morning, uh, Carol and Margie are going to offer our reading and our lighting, and we're going to have a response on the screen. So you're going to see in the bold print, um, you're going to be invited to... to Join along when you see the bold print on the screen. Carol? We have come to worship the Lord, the God of all nations. Righteous and faithful judge, Christ the coming King. The spirit of wisdom and understanding rests upon him. Under his reign, righteousness will flourish and peace will fill the earth. The spirit of counsel and might rests upon him. Judge the poor with equity and compassion, defending the cause of the needy. The spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord 
rests upon him. The earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In those days, the wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid. A little child shall leave them. A voice is crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Repent and bear fruit for the coming kingdom of God. Christ is coming. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace as we worship. like the opposite of those birthday candles that you can't blow out. <laughs> Great. Yay! A voice is crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Repent and bear fruit. For the coming kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you both. <clears throat> and now we're going to enjoy some very special music. Okay, uh, I'm upset. I'm already upset, guys. I'm already upset because here I did. I wanted to come out and do my superhero landing, and we had trouble finding the microphone, unfortunately. 
Oh, bummer. I'm so upset. You know what? I'm also super upset because this time of year, everything is all about Jesus this and Jesus in the manger and oh, we worship Jesus. And G yeah, okay, I get it. Jesus is our hero, you know, but like, I'm a hero too, right? Look, look, I, I even, I spend all night working on my hero costume. I got, I got my tool belt with all my hero things. And, and here is Jesus stealing my thunder. You, you guys ever hear about the things that Jesus did? Let's listen to this. This, this. this is what the Bible says that Jesus did. He, because he's such a superhero. We, we kind of heard it a little bit before. It's a, that he, he's not going to judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he's going to judge the needy. And with justice, he'll give decisions to the poor of the earth. He'll strike the earth with a rod out of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips, he's going to slay the wicked. The righteous, righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness is sash around his waist. Look, even the wolf, he's going to make the wolf and the lamb, they're going to lie down next to each other. And, and they're going to do that with the goat and the calf and the lion. They're all going to be uh, hanging out together, and a little child will lead them. Gosh, I, that, that's just so frustrating. You know what? Because I, got, I have some tools that, that, that are hero tools, right? And so, you know what? Mikey, stand up, and, and William, stand up right here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you guys out, okay, with, with my trusty tools for my tool belt. Look at this, all right? You know what these glasses can do? These glasses can see into the future, and they're going to see what your future job is going to be. Okay, all right, Mike, I can, I can see this. I can, I can see your skills, and you have the ability to really be able to, to taste when food has gone bad, yes, yes, and, and so, oh, oh, and so your job for the rest of your life is people are going to give you stuff that they don't like to taste and eat. You're basically going to be a trash compactor. Awesome. Okay, good. Uh, I, I, I rescued you from your future. You could have been a doctor or a lawyer or, or something like that. Don't, don't worry about that, all right? Oh, okay, all right. What, what else is on my trusty tool belt? Oh, look at this. Okay, with this cool thing here, I can actually, I can actually... Listen to your heart and see, see what's really going on here. Okay, let me, let me listen here. Oh, 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 okay. All right. Huh. You're very sad. You're very sad, right? Yes. I know it doesn't look it, but you are very, very sad. I, I trust my tools. You're very sad. So here's what I'm going to give you. All right, a bunch of sugar, okay? Because we all know sugar, you know, helps us, right? And, and makes us all, oh, you know what? But eventually, the sugar is going to bother your teeth. It's going to hurt your mouth. And so um, here, a little more candy to help you feel better when, when you're, you're not feeling great, right? Do you, guys, do you guys feel awesome? Oh, you know what? I know why. Because you're brothers. And sometimes brothers and siblings, they fight with each other, don't they? Sometimes. Okay, just like that. You know what? I've got a tool for that too. All right, I've got a tool for that. Guys, I, I'm going to need you to stand back to back for a second. Okay? All right. Okay, and what this is going to do, guys, is you're going to live together and walk together and move around together, right? If Jesus can do it for the lion and, and the, the, you know, the lamb to, to lay down together, then, you know, what, what do you think? Are you, are you guys going to love each other now forever and ever and never fight? Yeah, yeah no, oh, okay, okay, he's already, he's already gone. Oh. Gosh, I, you know, guys, I, 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 thought, I thought I was a hero. You guys can sit down. Thank you for, for helping. I, I, I thought I was a hero. Yeah, yeah, thank you for giving me back the sugar. That's good. <laughs> Gosh, I, 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 I'm, I'm now I'm really extra upset because I thought, I thought I was a hero and I thought I could solve all your problems, but uh, I, I'm not, right? I'm not the savior of the world. You know what? And I need saving myself too, right? But isn't it good that we have Jesus, that we don't have to trust in our own superpowers or our own tools, right? We can trust that Jesus is our real hero. He's the perfect hero that we need, all right? So, gang, let's, uh, let's thank Jesus now, right? Let, let's, let's talk to him and thank him. Jesus, we really, we really need some help. We need, we need some saving from ourselves, from each other, and we thank you that we can turn to you. Thank you for loving us so much. Help us to, to be more like you. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen.
as superhero Hector and the kids leave for Sunday school, I invite you to stand and greet one another in Christ's name. Well, friends, as you come back to your seats, um, I'm going to invite you to join me in a responsive reading. During the season of Advent, we're offering a responsive reading, either from the Psalter um, or as we get closer to Christmas, from the Gospel according to Luke. So you can turn in your hymnals to page 795 or follow along on the screen. This will be Psalm 72, just verses 1 to 7. Give the king your justice, O God. May he judge your people with righteousness. Let the mountains bear prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. In his days may righteousness flourish and peace abound till the moon be no more. Lydia, I'm going to invite you to come and offer a morning prayer. Will you bow in prayer with me? Dear God, on this Sunday, this Resurrection Day, we praise you. You made us and you faithfully continue that life-giving work in each one of us. Your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for waking us up and for giving us the strength to come and to worship you. And even when we can't come to you, you come to us. You are nearer to us than we are to ourselves, holding us together in ways we don't even realize. Thank you for your coming. Thank you for the moments that we sense your presence in ways that can't be denied. Thank you for the ways that you are close to us. In humility, those many years ago, you came to us, not as almighty, unreachable God, but as human. People could touch you, could hear you laugh, and could see the tears in your eyes. People saw you broken. We pray that you'd open our eyes this morning to see you in the faces of the broken ones in our lives, in this church and in the world. We confess that at this busy time of year, as we check off items on our to-do lists, so much gets done and yet so much is left undone. We forget to love each other. Stubbornly, we go our own way even as we thank you for your sacrifice that covers over our sin, making up for our failure to love as we should, we also pray for more love, for more compassion in our hearts. May we prepare the way for you 
pointing to you in all that we do, even when it comes at a cost. May we bring you near to the broken, broken in body and broken in spirit. We pray this as Jesus, our Emmanuel, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> and invite our ushers to come forward this morning as we receive our offering. <clears throat> we give back to God a portion of his generosity to us for his work here in the church, in our community, and in our world. I invite you to give as generously as you are able.
God, we dedicate these gifts that have been given today. May they be used to bring the light of Jesus Christ to our world and to our community. For we pray in his name. Amen. <clears throat> Would you remain standing for our hymn? You'll find it in your hymnal on page 203 or on the screen. Hail to the Lord's anointed. <clears throat> This morning's Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. This can be found on page 1076 of your pew Bibles. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch that will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. 
The cow will feed with the bear, their young will, do- will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the hole of the cobra, and the young child will, will put his hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the people. The nations will rally to him, and his place of rest will be glorious. Our next reading from the New Testament will be from Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 10, which is found on page 1,499. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. This is he who has spoken of through the prophets Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of a camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His flood, I'm sorry, his food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the Jordan River. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said this to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not think you can say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children for Abraham. The axe is ready at the root of the trees, and every tree What does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in in, in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor, gathering his wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This ends the reading of the word, Lord. Thank you, Melissa. Friends, would you join me in prayer? O oh God, be as near to us as our very breath. Fill us with your love. May your Holy Spirit have his way with us moving in us and forming us into the people you would have us be. Today, may we be open to the work that you would want to do in each one of us. For we know it is for our good and to the glory of your name. For we pray in Christ's name. Amen. When I was a kid, one of my favorite things at Christmas time would be, and this would start just after Thanksgiving, we'd get Christmas cards in the mail. How many of you like to get Christmas cards? We'd get Christmas cards, and this is what we would do. Now, you tell me what you do with them. We would take them, and uh, we had like a, a, a door frame that went out into the den, and we would tape them up the door frame. And it was cool as a kid. I couldn't wait until that whole door frame was filled with Christmas cards. Do you display them in some way in your house? I would tape them. Oh, and I love it. I'd go by and I'd open them up and see who they were from. <clears throat> and it was neat to see the different designs. It'd be poinsettias on some. Some would have a, you know, this Jesus and Mary and Joseph at the manger. Some would have the wise men. All sorts of Christmas themes. Um, well, I thought there would be a really good Christmas card for me to share with you as we're entering, we're still in Advent, but as we enter the Christmas season. Merry Christmas, you brood of vipers. If we got a Christmas card from John the Baptist, this is how he might herald the season. Merry Christmas, you brood of vipers. I I don't know if you can see below there, it says, love John the Baptist. What would you do if you uh, got a Christmas card calling you a brood of vipers? You might might, uh, mark who that was and maybe you would send them a card of your own. Every year in Advent, every year without fail, John the Baptist 
is one of the figures that leads us up to Christmas. He helps us make sense of what is happening at the incarnation of God into our world. We have this figure who, uh, as Melissa read in our scripture from Matthew, just imagine if you can paint a picture in your mind of this character. He wore camel's hair, which was itchy and hot. He ate locusts. And if you, now that's kind of a craze in some places now, is eating bugs. Have any of you ever had locusts? Maybe some of you have, you're just not admitting it. Um, <clears throat> he had locusts, and, and I don't think they were covered in chocolate. <laughs> he had locusts, he had wild honey. He lived out in the desert. Now in Jesus' day, sometimes the people who lived out in the desert were a little bit touched. So here's John the Baptist. Probably somebody that, if you're in good, polite company, you might want to avoid him. And here he is, sort of the last in the line of these prophets heralding the coming of the Messiah. He's the one who, for us, leads us into Christmas. So indeed, Merry Christmas, you brood of vipers. <laughs> now, that's a title that we may... We, we don't want that to apply to us, do we? John the Baptist, you know, he's talking to the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, those good religious leaders who come out to find out exactly who this John the Baptist is and what he's doing. And John the Baptist indicts them, doesn't he? Because they rely on their own righteousness. They rely on what they can do. They rely on their position, on their status on their heritage as being uh, descendants of Abraham. That's what they rely on. And John the Baptist says, that's not any good. That's no good. Someone's coming. Someone's coming. He's going to be different than anything, different than you can, anything you can imagine or expect. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. This incredible image of, of something that, that burns away and leaves what's pure. It has this great image of a, of a winnowing fork. What would happen as they would, as they would harvest and thresh grain, it would be this big, wide-open floor, and they would wait for a windy day, and they would throw this grain in the air, and the wind would take the chaff away, and what would fall back to the floor would be the pure grain. And John says, someone's coming, and spiritually, he's going to do that for you. So friends, here we are. We're getting ready for Christmas. You're here in church doing your good churchy duty. I'm so glad you're here. And I wonder sometimes when we come to these stories, if we're really honest, maybe they hit a little bit close to home. Sometimes, and maybe more than sometimes, I'm a lot like those Sadducees and Pharisees, relying on what I've done. I've got a good education. I know a lot. I'm a good pastor. How easy it can be for me and for us to rely on what we have done and not to throw ourselves wholly on the mercy of Jesus Christ. I have to include myself in this Christmas greeting. Sometimes I'm in that brood of vipers. But friends, there's good news for each one of us today. Is there's someone who's coming who does not want to leave us in that pit of snakes. Someone who's come into the world to rescue us, to redeem us, to save us. Even those of us who sometimes rely on our own self-righteousness. And what do we have to do? Well, John the Baptist lays it out for us, doesn't he? Repent! Repent! Now, repentance is a whole lot more than just saying you're sorry. How many of you who ever had, uh, oh, I, my kids aren't here, I can pick on them. <laughs> Sometimes they'll squabble and I'll tell them to apologize to each other. I'm sorry. You know they don't mean it. 
How many of you have been there with your kids? Maybe with adults, too, who apologize and say, I'm sorry, and you know full well it's an insincere apology. Repentance is so much more than just saying, I'm sorry. Repentance, metanoia, is the Greek word, which means a complete turning around, a total reorientation to your life. It's it's a directional word, that you were going one way, And now, because of an encounter with Jesus Christ, you turn around and go the other way. It's a complete reversal. And that's what John the Baptist tells the people to do. He mentions repent or repentance a few times in that section from Matthew. Repent. Turn around. Change your ways. There's an urgency to what John the Baptist is saying. And friends, there's an urgency today. How many of us in our spiritual lives live as if we have all the time in the world? Repent. Turn around now. There'll be a day coming when we have to give an account. And now is the time to change, to turn around to have an encounter with Jesus that is transformative and changes who we are at our core. So John the Baptist says, repent. But then repentance should lead to something. What does John the Baptist say? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. In other words, by what you say and what you do by your life, show that you've repented. May it play out and how you have a relationship with God and with other people. Bear fruit. Live a life of love, joy, peace, patience, self-control. Friends, this morning, if we're honest, there's a bit of a viper in each one of us. I'm right there with you. I dare say I'm a bit more of a viper on some days than most of you. But friends, aren't you glad that that's not where we have to stay? We can repent. We can change. And repentance, yes, we repent and we turn to Jesus Christ and we confess our sin and he becomes our Lord and Savior. But as I mentioned last week, Jesus Christ wants to come into your life not only when you're born again, But also every single day, he wants to come into your life. And he comes into our lives when we repent of our ways. When we turn each day anew to him and follow him and live a life that shows he is our Lord and Savior. Friends, in this lead up to Christmas, where I'm sure all of our schedules are getting busier and busier, it's so easy to lose sight of what's really important. Time with family and friends, presents, good Christmas cookies, I love those. All of the trappings of the season are nice, aren't they? Don't forget John the Baptist's message. Hear the urgency with which he tells it. Repent. Because, friends, when we repent, when we turn, when we embrace Jesus Christ, when we live a life that bears fruit that's worthy of Him, we prepare the way for Him to come into our lives and into the world around us through the way that we live. Friends, maybe there's a little bit of a brood of viper in each one of us. But thank God. That's not how it has to stay. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Friends, as we pray to celebrate the Lord's table this morning, I invite you and we will affirm our common faith together in the Apostles' Creed. You can find it in your hymnal on page 882, and you can also find it on the screen. I invite you to join me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. I invite you to take your red hymnal, the United Methodist hymnal, and turn to page 12. Friends, Christ our Lord invites to this his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and before one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That is proof of God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And please join me on the next page at the great thanksgiving. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. A thousand years is but a day in your sight, for you are steadfast and sure. You come with might to protect us. Like a shepherd, you feed us. You hold us gently in your arms and give us comfort in times of trial. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, whose coming was foretold by your prophet John in the wilderness. He prepared us for Jesus, who came to give us life. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 
Because there is one loaf, friends, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing together in the body of Christ. In the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing together in the blood of Christ. I'm going to invite those who are helping serve communion this morning to please come forward. Friends, the table of Christ is ready and all are welcome. None are compelled to come forward, but the table of Christ is open to all who would like to come and to receive his grace. At the usher's direction, you'll be invited to leave your pews and to come forward. Invite you to come with your hands out like this, because what we receive this morning is a total gift of grace, and we come with openness. So come with your hands out. You'll be given a piece of bread. You would take a cup from the tray. There are receptacles to put your cups in as you return to your seat by the side aisle. If you need a gluten-free option, you can just come right here. And there are gluten-free options at this table over here in this communion line. So make your way to this line if if that's a need for you. I invite you to come as the usher's direction and as God leads you.
yourself to us. Prepare us to accept your Son anew into our lives. And grant that we may go out into the world in the strength of your Holy Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and all the people of God said. Amen. We invite you to stand as you're able for our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, on page 399 in your hymnal or on the screen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen.